Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have Shri Kamal Jaswal, who has retired from the Indian Administrative Services. When did you retire, sir? 2004. 2004. Long time ago. Long time back. And we're going to discuss the lateral entry into the civil services. Uh, recently, a lot of uh, induction is supposed to be underway. The first lot has entered, I think, nine officers have been Joint selected. secretary level. Joint secretary level. What do you look, how do you look at this uh, scenario that is unfolding? Is it, shall we say, graded, uh, you know, few people joining specific to requirements that is there in the civil services and the civil services may not have? Or is it a change in fundamental policy with respect to civil services? I think it's been uh, made uh, quite clear by, by uh, Niti Aayog when this uh, first dose of uh, nine uh, induction of nine joint, se joint secretaries was uh, administered. Actually, it was ten, but then they took nine. Uh, uh, that the intention is to uh, have a, a much uh, larger uh, exercise uh, going down to the middle uh, management level, up to deputy secretary, up to deputy secretary director level, and. It has uh, been unfolding in that direction. So, uh, while these uh, nine people who have been selected are yet to join, uh, the government has already announced its intention to uh, induct 400 uh, uh, officers at the level of uh, deputy secretary di director, which represents a, a significant uh, uh, proportion of uh, the uh, posts at this level. So it, it's uh, not uh, a symbolic uh, exercise, it's not uh, uh, a small undertaking, it's, uh, it's an extensive uh, uh, overhaul virtually of uh, the system of uh, induction. And also the, how the civil services have been till their date yes. kept out, shall we say, of the politicization process by creating an independent and relatively insulated civil services. Unlike the United States, for instance, and this has been the two kinds of civil service, uh, shall we say, paradigms we have. One is called the spoiled system, that the, whichever party comes in power, whoever is the president, reworks the entire civil service to suit his politics. And the British one, which kept the, shall we say, the civil services uh, insulated relatively from the political parties in power, expecting that the civil services will carry out whatever the political directions given by the government is. Yeah, this is how uh, in the popular mind it appears, but uh, the reality is different. In the US also, there is uh, uh, a permanent civil service which uh, uh, accounts for the uh, quasi-totality of uh, the uh, public servants uh, in the US. A uh, small proportion is open for what is called the spoil system. So, uh, and in the UK, uh, it was just uh, uh, the kind of uh, civil service that we have in India today, uh, but things have changed in the UK. So, they also have uh, a very uh, significant induction of uh, uh, people from different walks of life uh, at a higher level. So nothing stays as it is and keeps evolving, but we seem to be frozen uh, in time and we are still following the Whitehall model uh, of the 19th century by and large. So you feel that there is an argument there? There is a strong argument for uh, lateral entry, but uh, then it should be, uh, it should not be a one-off exercise. It should not be something which is, uh, which is done in a knee-jerk fashion. Uh, it is. It has to be uh, an integral part of uh, the process, and uh, then it should uh, uh, answer certain uh, specific questions that are uh, arising from the way the civil services have been operating. And at the same time, we should also uh, look at the problems in the civil service which have uh, necessitated uh, resort to a measure like uh, lateral entry. 
lateral entry has taken place in small measure out yes, per all along, earlier all also. along, all along, but at, at a very high level. At the bond takes in Aluwalia, yes. was for instance, an example. Every I think starting from uh, Troda is another one. Yes, uh, even uh, earlier, going back to the time of uh, uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri, V V Kurian, uh, Kurian was uh, inducted uh, to head the National Dairy Development Board, and the process continued uh, through successive. Uh, Governments. You have been referring to private conversation, the second administrative reforms commission, which had also suggested lateral entry. How does those recommendations differ from what is being sought to be done now? See, uh, as you say, uh, there are two uh, distinct models. One is of uh, a permanent uh, civil service where one ri rises from the induction level to uh, the highest post that is available in the civil service and the other is uh, a more open uh, position based uh, recruitment system where people are inducted at the appropriate level uh, in a uh, in a way in which qualifications match the requirements of the job so uh, <coughs> What the commission uh, suggested, the second uh, uh, administrative reforms commission suggested was uh, uh, a modification of uh, the uh, permanent civil service system uh, by incorporating certain features of uh, the position based system. So Such as what are the so criteria? The, they, they had suggested that uh, uh, a proportion of uh, uh, posts at the higher level, which is the higher administrative grade level, additional secretary and uh, above. Not in fact, they, yeah, they should secretary. be they should be uh, open for uh, lateral entry, and that would uh, uh, have the uh, advantage of uh, induction of uh, uh, fresh blood, a new perspective, and domain experience. But then the focus was on making the civil services, the existing civil services, uh, the existing pool of uh, talent which is available in the civil service, uh, more effective and uh, uh, capable of uh, uh, delivering the organizational objectives. So it had, it had said that in certain areas where mm -hmm. the normal skill set may not be enough for yes. the existing civil service, right. where you may need special skills to handle certain specialized disciplines, or even looking at outside talent for other reasons, you could have the upper echelons of the civil yes. service open to this induction from outside. Outside, and yeah. this was at the, at the from joint outside and from inside as well. Inside as well, both inside as well. Inside because uh, uh, normally the uh, career progression is within uh, vertical silos. Okay. So the, the idea was to uh, break down those walls and uh, allow. Uh, talented uh, individuals uh, to uh, compete for positions which are available in this uh, pool. So, so in this but that is not what is being followed that what the Niti Kayog no. has recommended. So it's a kind of, this is a 2008 document, so it's no. not a very old one, it's only 10, 11 years old. So this has been jettisoned completely and yeah. what the Niti Aayog has said basically wholesale induction from deputy secretary to the secretary level for, for that that, so that the information uh, is scarce okay. uh, there's very little inf information in the public domain so there's a lot of conjecture in the reporting that happens in the media but uh, it appears uh, that uh, uh, after the induction of uh, uh, these uh, nine uh, joint secretaries uh, the niti ayog has uh, gone about uh, uh, identifying 54 positions for induction within itself for meeting its own uh, needs but then it uh, it is recognized that in uh, bodies like the niti ayog the uh, requirement is for uh, advisory uh, uh, persons, personnel persons. by and large uh, a staff function so that's not very unusual even in the planning commission it used to happen but now this is the third dose so it's, it's a large dose uh, and accounts for a significant proportion of the total uh, positions which are available in this uh, at so this level. 
certainly government services. Yes, thank you. And you're talking of something like 400, as 400, you said. Yeah. And that would be deputy secretary, director level as yes, well. Yes, yes. And so that would be about 30% 30, 30 of uh, the, the total exists. post at this level. So what, of course, is a little constrained the number of people who can be promoted, particularly those who are filled traditionally from not the IES uh, ranks or the IRS ranks, but from the lower ranks. That would actually become uh, then. So that's one of the concerns uh, that it would uh, affect the career uh, prospects of uh, the people who are already in position. There are other concerns that have been articulated, like this is uh, like uh, the uh, affirmative action uh, dimension. Already, we have seen that nine posts did not have any affirmative action. Yes. Each of them were treated as a single entry yes. position. Yes. And therefore, not considered as yes. nine. Yes, so this is uh, one. And then uh, uh, there are certain uh, uh, ambiguities about uh, the career progression of those who have been inducted. I mean, how are they going to be treated? If you take a position that each post is uh, a cadre in itself, single post cadre, which allows you to uh, circumvent the requirement of uh, uh, you know, uh, reservations uh, shil shil for shill tribes, shill caste, etc. Then you cannot post that posts. person to uh, another uh, uh, posts, uh, you know, in the universe. So it restricts the mobility of that person. And you what happens to you can't have it both ways. Yes, you can't ways. have it both ways. But at least in theory, you can't have it both ways. But it does not uh, uh, prevent the government from, uh, you know, later on, later on changing its uh, rules stance. Of the and rules we have of seen, yes, we have seen this uh, happen in so many uh, cases. You know, the goalposts keep on changing all the time. The objectives are redefined as you go along, muddle through. But the other bigger issue for me is that if 400 people are being inducted in this particular fashion, this are to be are to be inducted. Uh -huh. This government can change the composition of the civil service by inducting in quote unquote fellow travelers and they become a permanent, shall we say 30% injection of a certain kind of ideological outlook which this government will be comfortable with. Yeah, this so there is a risk of also changing the basic, shall we say, not political nature of the civil service, which is what it is supposed to be, but we know in practice that doesn't really happen. But nevertheless, this is a very large structural change that could take place yes. and get what was Mrs. Gandhi's time was being called as a committed judiciary. We can get a committed bureaucracy, which will then obey or keep on working for the kind of ideology this government has. It will depend on uh, how this uh, process is actually uh, conducted. Uh, by and large, the Union Public Service Commission has a certain reputation of uh, objectivity and fairness. And uh, uh, even in the times of uh, Mrs. Gandhi, I think nobody ever said that uh, the uh, examinations, uh, competitive examinations conducted by uh, the UPSC were influenced so as to allow for entry of a certain kind of uh, uh, candidates. So, uh, there is no reason to believe that the UPSC, if it is assigned this responsibility, and will, if there are suddenly, uh, will, will suddenly, uh, you know, uh, relinquish its uh, stance and its uh, position. But then uh, we also know that uh, institutions uh, uh, change, evolve. We have seen this happen in the case of the uh, election commission. It has become much more pliable than it used to be in the past. So one doesn't know, but this is a concern that has been articulated. But I think it will be unfair to uh, prejudge, and we'll see how uh, it actually uh, pans out. But objectively, there is a risk. There is a possibility. Possibility. There is a possibility. And particularly, as we do not know, this will be three through civil service uh, examinations, or it will be through other means. So we have to see yes, what is have the to see how it process is going to be of induction is yes. done. Because the civil service is a very large process, therefore to influence it in micro sense is more difficult. But to influence a hundred at a time or four hundred people may, in theory, yes. be much easier yes, that to possibility do. Is there. And we could move to a quasi 
spoil system, but one of a kind because once inducted, they cannot be removed that easily. So that, that is also, also not certain because uh, from whatever information is available in the public domain, the idea is to give uh, uh, con contractual terms to the uh, inductees. But then, as I say, information is scarce. One doesn't know. One can't, uh, you know, hypothetically uh, assume that uh, it is going to be a particular uh, arrangement. So, so, while at the moment we cannot objectively speak about what's going to happen unless we have a crystal ball. So, yeah. what is really the issue is the, there are threats that could actualize in future for which we need at least bodies of which you are a part of the right. constitutional responsibility group also keep its shall we say its vigilance on the issue but my main concern is about uh, the the rich pool of uh, uh, talent and uh, expertise and uh, competence that is available uh, to the government currently and uh, which is uh, functioning in a suboptimal way and which is uh, given this uh, popular image of uh, a bureaucracy which is uh, uh, preoccupied with its own uh, 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 material comforts and uh, which is insensitive to public public needs which is uh, bereft of uh, uh, consideration for uh, the toiling masses all kinds of uh, popular and which has entered into uh, mm, uh, those uh, uh, expedient uh, compacts with the uh, influential politicians, uh, compacts of uh, convenience and mutual accommodation uh, with business interests and politicians. So, the question is why has this situation arisen? Because even now there are people who are doing a remarkable job in spite of all the limitations of the system. And as we have seen that it is possible for them to uh, become, w once they are out of the system and go uh, to other organizations, multilateral organizations or abroad, then they become domain experts. Like the induction of uh, Parmeshwar and Iyer and uh, in the Bhushan uh, by this government, uh, in the government has uh, shown. So, these are the people who are available to you and you are not using them properly. And then there is another concern that you go through this uh, process for the federal government, for the union government. What about the states? Because in the scheme of constitutional scheme of things, uh, most of uh, the uh, functions uh, are assigned to the state, state governments. Government. So, you cannot have you know, one system for the union and uh, a different system for uh, uh, the states. So, the states have, have should, should have been a part of this exercise. So, together they should have evolved uh, uh, a scheme and which, which should have, which would, should have factored in the recommendations of bodies like the second uh, administrative reforms commission which came out with an excellent report. Uh, which is here, uh, refurbishing on uh, refurbishing of uh, personal administration, uh, scaling new heights. So, it's a lot of uh, uh, domain uh, knowledge and expertise and consultative uh, uh, collective wisdom has uh, gone into these reports, but these reports have been ignored. And suddenly we have uh, uh, this a scheme, new policy a new policy, where and how. Uh, which is not, uh, which, which has been formed in an opaque manner. One does not know how the policy formation has taken place. And what are the issues that have been uh, considered and what are the real motives uh, behind this uh, scheme? You know, Mr. Jaswal, we used to say on the earlier reforms in the government that quite often the government tries to solve a problem that is not there, that they are solving a different problem than that exists. And therefore, we get two problems rather than one. Quite right. This is, seems to be another one of those, trying to solve a problem which does not exist and not addressing the problem that really does. Thank you very much, Mr. Jaswal, for being with us. We'll continue to discuss with you this and other issues that are of interest to you and to us. Thank you. This is all the time we have in News Click today. Do keep watching News Click.